All right, let's just start by diving into this question and trying to make sense of what it's saying. It's got a lot of lines, so that already kind of scares me a little bit, but um, it's supposed to be number four, right? So it's, it's number four, it means it's generally easy, it's at the beginning of the section. So let me kind of show you how I would think about this. A proposal for a new library was included on an election ballot. A radio show stated that three times as many people voted in favor of the proposal as people who voted against it. A social media post reported that 15,000 more people voted in favor of the proposal than voted against it. Based on these data, how many people voted against the proposal? Notice. I'm highlighting three pieces here. Now, right now, my brain is just like all over the place. I have no idea what's going on. That's okay. So you can feel confused. You're not supposed to just instantly understand every question. I've been doing this for, you know, 10 years uh, and I still don't. Actually, 15 years. So I still don't understand every math question when I read it instantly. I have to think about things. But I do notice that there are really three pieces of information they're giving me. And many of you will actually see this as two pieces of information, and I think that that difference between two and three is really how you kind of get comfortable solving these SAT story questions. Obviously, they tell us there's three times as many who voted in favor as voted against. They also say that there's 15,000 more people voting in favor, so that's obviously helpful. Maybe we can make an equation to deal with that. But I also notice that the question itself, the part with the question mark, is asking me something very direct and very straightforward, okay? How many people voted against the proposal? So even though there are four answer choices, four possible values for the number of people who voted against, I still know it's really only gonna be one of those four values. So what I'm setting you up for here is that this is gonna be a guess and check question. I would not try to create an equation. I don't trust myself. This is the hard module. I'm gonna have, you know, the timer is ticking. I'm afraid I'm gonna make a mistake. And I know how the SAT works. If I make the wrong equation and solve for X, it's gonna give me one of these wrong answers and I'm not gonna know any better. So I have to try to work with the answers as numbers and use arithmetic to think about this. So I'm using the answer choice as one piece of information. And to start, I really like to just start with choice B and just assume it's correct and then say, well, what would that mean? How would it work with the rest of the story if there were 15,000 people against this measure, okay? And again, I'm getting that from the question. The literal question at the end here is telling me what these answer choices mean. So you have to pay attention to that. That is sometimes just as valuable as the more straightforward stuff that they give you in the question itself. Now, if I go back, the thing that I understand most is that the 15, there are 15,000 more people voting in favor than voting against it. So if I added 15,000 to this, right, so plus 15,000, I would get that there are 30,000 people uh, in favor of whatever this is. Now there's one more piece of information that I need to check with those two numbers, right? 30,000 in favor, 15,000 against. It's supposed to be the case that the number in favor is three times the number against. Well, that's not true here, right? Because if we did 15,000 times three, we would get 45,000. Now that's the total number of votes, but that's not what it said. So my guess is this is actually the trap answer. This is the thing that most people are gonna pick if they're using an equation, because somewhere along the way, the three times piece is gonna get lost. And so this is probably, if you got it wrong, what you picked. But now we've just proven it doesn't make sense that the, the three pieces of information do not work together to support this answer choice. So now we just try something else. And maybe it's confusing to you. Do you go up? Do you go down? That's okay. Um, with practice, you'll get better at knowing which way to go. And that's why I choose choice B, is it lets me make a choice afterwards if it's wrong, whether to go with a smaller number because it was wrong in, in one direction or a larger number because it was wrong in a different one. And if you don't know, that's okay. You'll go the wrong way. You'll make a mistake, but you'll eventually find the right answer as long as you're persistent. So in this case, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to go with a lower number because I kind of want that 15,000 vote difference to count more. So I'm assuming it's going to be 7,500. Let's see. We're going to try choice A. That's 7,500 against. Like we said, 15,000 more are going to be in favor. So that's what? Uh, 22,500? Uh, I would definitely check with my calculator, but I'm pretty sure I'm right there. So, okay. Now what? Well, again, we go back to the three times thing. Is three times 7,500 22,5? I think so. 7,500 times three, I'm just using my normal scientific calculator, is 22,500. That's supposed to be a comma. So there you go. That's my proof. A is the answer. I do not need to check C or D because I proved 
uh, A correct. If you had gone in the opposite direction and and tried choice C, it would have failed. But that's a good example of then don't just pick D because you're in that direction and that's all that's left. You have to prove D because that's why you know we want to guess and actually check to make sure that our check works out. This is a confusing question, but there's nothing that says you can't work backwards through things. Even if we didn't have answer choices here, you might be able to just kind of pick a number and, and see how it fits with the story without the answer choices to guide you. That's okay. Not everything on the SAT needs to be solved with an equation. Your teachers in school really force you into that mode of thinking. You're constantly doing algebra, you're constantly writing equations. But you're probably constantly making mistakes too. And so we don't want those mistakes to crop up on the SAT. We have other alternative strategies to get these points. So just take them. You don't need to think about the, way, the questions the way your teacher would. You don't get any extra points for doing what your teacher says. You just get the points for getting it right.